Let's have a sesh on flow production. So flow production comes out of the effectiveness side of operations. So you're thinking about how you can reduce your costs to therefore reduce your prices, how you can improve your quality to meet your customer's expectations, or three, you can improve your flexibility so you can meet your consumers' demands as their fashions and tastes change. So flow production is about the effectiveness side. It's about continuous, so non-stop production to produce emphasis on many identical products, many identical products, usually, not always, on an assembly line for the mass market. So it's about that massive production of identical items. Examples, household appliances, many of them are basically done through flow production. Washing machines, TVs, ovens, fridges, they would all be done on an assembly line. Also, clothes that we see in our top shops, top mans, nexts, H&Ms, many of them will be done and created through flow production. And also standard cars, so box standard cars that you'll see here and there every day, they will be done through flow production as opposed to custom built cars where you might have it souped up to your particular needs, which is likely to be created through job production. Okay. Why would you probably move from job production to flow production? Well, you're a business, you're doing well, you're growing. You started doing job production at first, but then as your business became more popular, you had increased demand. And that increased demand from your customers meant that you needed to produce more. So you had to increase your production. It was difficult for you to increase your production given the constraints of job production, that it's slower and involves more labour, more workers. So you decide you need to move to flow production. But to move to flow production, you're going to have to buy machinery. You're going to have to buy capital. So this is the emphasis of flow production. It's about buying capital to speed up your assembly line. If you do that, there's pros and there's cons. Pros, well, you're going to produce more to meet that increased demand it's likely you will produce more now that you use machines than workers. Great, that's the main thing, because that might be the bottom line that you're trying to increase your sales and therefore increase your profits. Perhaps if you're a public limited company or a private limited company, you're trying to please your shareholders with those profits. Okay, number two is that workers can specialise in one activity. So there's an argument that as it's now continuous production and you'll have one worker on this part of the assembly line, another worker on that part of the assembly line, that you each do your little job and you do it numerous times. And because you do it numerous times, you become an expert in it and you become quicker at it. Also, this might lead to economies of scale. So as your amount of units increase, then you're gonna actually bring down the average cost per one thing, per one unit. Confusion with economies of scale, please look at that video. However, despite these pros, these advantages to using flow production versus job production, there are also problems. So the problems, the cons are, well, the one, need to buy capital. Because now you've moved to flow production, you're gonna to have to buy this machinery. And the question is, how can you afford to buy this machinery? And this could be a really good evaluation point for a six, nine or 12 marker. So how you afford it is likely to be down to sources of finance. Is it gonna be through debt or like a loan or an overdraft? Or are you gonna use a government grant? Or are you gonna use retained profit? Or are you gonna go to the equity side and are you gonna use share capital to fund it? That's a big question. It will depend on the case study, but pick it up because there'll be a hook in there for you to bring into it into your answer. Um, also, if you can afford it, have you done your market research, your primary or your secondary market research? Because is that demand actually there or have you just made it up? Is there actually demand for that product to justify spending money to move to flow production? Because if you can justify it, you look smashing. And it's all about essentially these two things, managing your risk. Because it's gonna be risky paying for this capital, but if you're managing your risk appropriately, then it's the right decision for your business. Number two, workers become less motivated because as you move to that, I said here, you come specialised and you do your little job and you do it over and over and over again. Well, there's an argument that you become less motivated because you just, after time, become bored of what you do because you're doing the same thing every day, perhaps nine to five, five days a week. It just gets boring doing it. So doing the same repetitive task can be a problem. However, 
you could argue back against this that if the business is smart and they think about cross-training so that workers they're actually able to train in one area and then after a month they move to another area and they're learning new skills there then that might keep them motivated and it, may, it might mean that the productivity is increased and how much how much they create how many units is increased and they don't become demotivated so it's definitely a consideration of cross training and you can throw it in there to back up and justify your answer also number three is it reduces flexibility by moving to flow production the reason why is because in job production, if someone wants one of their goods tailored to them, maybe they just want it done in a different colour or a different design, then in job production, it's probably easier to just do it and change that one for that customer. But in flow production, you might need to go and configure all your machines, all your capital might be set up in a certain way that just builds 5,000 of the units in an identical way. And if you need to now build one differently, it might take time to reconfigure all your machines to just build that one and it might not be cost effective to do that so you therefore become less flexible however you could argue against that technology is improving for instance 3d printers you could argue are now more flexible and can allow flow production possibly something that you could argue in your answers and you could also argue with technology that changing colors have become more possible with different goods because that's often one of the things that needs to be initially changed with the variety of products that you are to create and produce. I hope that helps with flow production. Good luck with your exams.